the head of LTE Guiding and its president, Thelani Majola, is caught up in a string of corruption scandals that have shook the country of South Africa. Please kindly subscribe, like, and share as was go into the details. Significant 4 billion rand was awarded to his firm, LTE Guiding, for the Gianni Water Project, which aimed to provide the Gianni area and neighboring communities with clean water. However, the project is still unfinished, depriving the locals of access to consistent water supply despite the significant expenditure. Under the then Minister of Water and Sanitation, Namvila Mokanyane, the Gianni Water Project's projected amount of 90 million rands mysteriously increased to 4 billion rand. This outrageous amount was given to LTE guiding with no discernible effects, exposing egregious misappropriation of public money and a deficiency in accountability in contracts with the government. Talani Majola has had many scandals damage her image before this one. The Hawks searched his office in 2021 as part of their inquiry into a questionable agreement with the South African Police Service, SAPS. LTE guiding was paid 77 million rands for face masks that were never delivered, which was obviously against the law, particularly since that protective gear was desperately required at the height of the COVID outbreak. Thus yet, Majola has not been the target of any significant action despite the raid and public uproar. Majola's name also came up during the public investigation conducted by the Zondo Commission into state capture and corruption in South Africa. Bank records showing that Majola reportedly paid 200,000 rands as a bribe to Julius Malima, the head of the Economic Freedom Fighters, EFF, were among the evidence presented. Subsequent inquiries showed that Majola gave almost 3 million rands to a front organization connected to Malima between 2016 and 2019 which raised severe questions about the scope of political corruption. There are yet more controversies involving Thelani Majola. The Gauteng government has awarded him many lucrative contracts, and his business has received billions of rands in exchange for dubious services. Furthermore, he is associated with unscrupulous activities that occurred in Ekorhulini while Mzwandal Messina was the municipal manager. His tight contacts with well-known politicians like Tony Yengeni, Messina and Malima are also entangled in the web of corruption. The public's desire for accountability and openness in government is becoming stronger as these crises surface. The pattern of wrongdoing and corruption linked to Thelani Majola calls into question the morality and integrity of South Africa's ruling class. The nation is at a turning point in its history as it struggles to deal with the effects of widespread corruption and the pressing need for ethical and responsible leadership. Once more, Economic Freedom Fighters, EFF, founder Julius Malima harshly criticized the new political agreement between the Democratic Alliance, DA, and the African National Congress, ANC, in a song evaluation, calling it a one-sided reimbursement that sells out the African and dull social classes. The piece by Malima, which was taken down today, argues that the two fundamental social events understanding undermines the fight in South Africa for genuine consistency and open access linked to money. The ANC, he claims, is to blame for abandoning its accidental beginnings in order to align with a party that often represents the interests of white minorities. Malima claims that the ANC's decision to work with the DA is blatant evidence that they have lost their moral sense. This union is about uniting ability to the weight of the dull and African bigger portion, not about advancing our family's interests. Malima's assessment is based on his belief that the DA's policies do not prioritize the economic advancement of impoverished South Africans. He declares that the ANCDA agreement is an attempt to undermine the unique approach that the EFF supports, which combines nationalizing important projects and seizing land without compensation. The founder of the EFF guarantees that his party will continue to oppose any measures that do not advance the interests of the disadvantaged. We wholeheartedly reject this biased simultaneousness from our core selves. The African people and the EFF will never be sold off, he says. Malima's strong position emerges from his rising political movements and alliances before to the general elections of 2024. His assessment of the ANCDA relationship is likely to resonate with locals who are perplexed by the traditional political underpinnings. In light of all of this, Malima urges South Africans to support the EFF's primary goal of securing assured financial support in exchange for an open door 
and to forgive any political plans that jeopardize the dignity and inevitable destiny of ordinary and African residents. EFF leader Julius Malima recently.